Leaks, leaks, leaks. Some are big, some are small, but they happen across all industries, usually as a result of an employee telling a friend something and then they go spout off online, or an employee gets fired under bad terms and wants revenge. But are they always true? And will the person above me stop hammering whatever it is he's hammering long enough for me to get through the video? Keep watching to find out. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and about a week ago or so, there was a massive leak post from a uh, allegedly a former employee of Blizzard. They went through every single title, every single game, Blizzard internal part of politics, and they just talked about everything. They, they let it all out. It was like two pages, three, four. It was like three or four pages. I don't know. It was really, really long. And they said a whole lot of stuff in the post. And um, some of the stuff sounded true. Some of the stuff sounded false. Some of the things were a bit in the middle. And I feel like I have enough experience uh, consulting with studios and dealing with studios and being around uh, gaming in general and uh, the, the business of things to be able to maybe have some extra insight to definitively debunk or prove whether these leaks are real. They're pretty crazy, so I hope you stick around. We're gonna be going through each point individually. Here's a sneak peek of what we got. There's a lot here, guys. They really go in on everything Blizzard. So if you're a Blizzard fan and you want some uh, peace of mind or whatever about whether these are true or false, well, stick around. I guess we'll uh, we'll look at it. And in case you're wondering about the colors, uh, why they look a little bit weird, it's because this was originally green text on a white background, which I don't want to put anyone through. So I finagled with the colors a little bit to prevent people's eyes from bleeding. So point number one right here. The mood across the whole company is bad. StarCraft is dead. Diablo is dead. Overwatch, despite most of the office saying that sacrificing our casual audience to chase esports money was a bad idea, lots of lots of strong language in this, by the way, that was crossed out, uh, is dying. Hearthstone is being described as in a death spiral. We've had four projects canceled in three months, and Ion's team doesn't want to hear it, but Battle for Azeroth is an unmitigated disaster. Um, so, I mean... These aren't really leaks, right? A lot of people, like StarCraft is dead, everyone knows that. Diablo is dead, everyone knows that. And by dead, we're talking Blizzard standards of dead, right? Not like actual dead. There's still hundreds, probably, there's still over a thousand people playing Diablo. There's still uh, over a thousand people playing StarCraft too. But um, by Blizzard standards, it's pretty, it's pretty dead. Especially because these are like mass multiplayer type of games. Um, Overwatch, I think that, uh, so this is true I think about Overwatch. I don't have any confirmed numbers that it's that it's like dying or whatever, but I do know that Blizzard does a good job with Overwatch League and PR and stuff of making the player base seem a lot bigger than it actually is for Overwatch. But uh, I, it's definitely not. It still it still has a good amount of players. Like I said, I don't have internal numbers, but I do know that it's lower than it looks. But that's all I know. Next up, right here, anyone who hasn't worked there for at least 15 years got a non-negotiable pay cut or the choice to walk. Josh Allen went berserk, all because Papa Activision wants to save money. I am pretty sure this is a brazen lie because I am aware of uh, some people who work at Blizzard and not only have they not gotten pay cuts, one person I'm aware of has actually gotten a raise. So I think that this is just wrong. Maybe this person's, I'm, I'm going to give this person the benefit of the doubt, by the way. Maybe this person's department got a lot of pay cuts, so he's exaggerating or whatever. But from what I know, this is not a company-wide thing. So many people, and this is an interesting one, so many people are in positions they're unqualified for. This isn't an insult, it's a fact. There are people two years into new positions asking their underlings what to do constantly. For Blizzard specifically, I find this to be a bit strange. It's possible in the higher, like, higher, higher level business management positions that this could potentially be true. I could see them bringing in people who don't really know anything about games, who make maybe some ignorant statements and stuff. That's potentially true, but it sounds like um, he's saying so many people, which is a bit strange because Blizzard is such, like, if you've ever tried to apply for, for Blizzard or if, or if you've ever looked into applying to Blizzard for any sort of game related, game dev related position, artist position, whatever, they are impossible like their standards are ridiculously high 
it's insane. And usually they don't hire into lead positions or they don't hire into senior positions. They almost always promote up from what I understand. So the idea of people being unqualified for positions of all the things that Blizzard does, they definitely tend to put qualified people in positions. So he could be talking about higher up managing people or you know not specific game dev related people but um that's that's what i know at least about blizzard's hiring structure and promotion structures no matter how people tear their hair out and yell the higher ups still think trying to make an esport out of every game is going to strike it rich eventually this is again public information in fact they straight up said that their number one strategy is to monetize esports they actually so basically in case you didn't read this which you didn't because you don't follow financial statements or or stocks or anything like that 99 percent of you uh, basically, they said there's no way to make more money off of making games. Like they, they, Activision Blizzard has so much market share, they can't get more market share. Like they have the biggest. Well, they used to. They really dropped. But at the time of making the statement, they had like the biggest mobile game. They had the biggest PC games. They had the biggest console games. They're like, guys, we can't sell more games. Like we've sold all the games we could possibly ever sell in the whole world. We need to make more money somehow. And esports was the way they did it. Now. Um, this is public information, and I think everyone has pretty much criticized this, but it's it's true, obviously. I wouldn't call it a leak, but it's true. Massive crunch on projects like Diablo 4. People sleeping under their desks. So this is a really unfortunate bit of uh, how games work in general. Uh, every studio has crunches. Every studio has really kind of unhealthy work-life balance. Um, I haven't seen a studio that has that i'm sure they exist but most of the big ones absolutely not you see articles about this all the time and i realize that i realize this is actually taking some time to go through so i'm gonna skip some less whatever points like chris metzen came in and i don't know it's like some cool story bro sort of thing many artists let go and work outsourced to companies like thai asset producer expect to lower production costs so from what i know there are not a lot of core development members for games let let go like i don't know about a lot of artists let go or designers or developers let go um as far as i know most of the people who were let go were the supporting roles like the esports people and such i'm not aware of many artists being let go i'm not a super insider that's just what i'm i just know a little bit of outs like fringe information um it is true that blizzard has been outsourcing more and more stuff particularly for overwatch specifically and specifically for skins I know that they outsource a lot. Um, as far as outsourcing to expats, expects specifically, maybe they can, but, uh, and I'm not gonna bring it up just for time, but I can tell you that Xpec does not have any Blizzard titles in their portfolio. All right, let's get into the games. Overwatch 2. So it's in full production, obviously everyone knows that, as a It Will Fix It release. It's just Left 4 Dead 2 with robots, which we already know, someone said that already played uh have you played the flashback seasonal event it's that for 60 dollars and exclusive cosmetics uh, i'd be surprised if it was 60 dollars, but this person probably doesn't know what the price is next up in one of the strangest sites i've seen a person of color i won't place the race or gender of for, for their employment's sake walked off in disgust at four flappy white dudes getting real excited to finally develop a game with no white men in it um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is like the LOL, haha, SJW dummies sort of meme. Um, so I think that the statement itself that they made, that they want to finally develop a game with no white people in it, is, or white men rather in it, is strange because Soldier 76 is like the main character of, it was, he's like the, the, the main hero of Overwatch, he's the leader of Overwatch, right? And uh, McCree apparently is going to be main part of the story, as you're going to see later on. So this statement would be false about their own game. It would be hard to find four flabby white dudes unless he's just making fun of them. Um, I, don't, I don't believe this story. I don't believe this story. But it could it could be true. It could be true. I think that this is really pandering to, like, the, wow, Blizzard is becoming too SJW thing with Overwatch League and stuff. Anyway, the game is set before and after the Winston home invasion. This, the memes about Overwatch being entirely backstory was strongly taken to heart. That makes sense, right? And I hope so. It'd be nice for the story to progress instead of just keep talking about backstory. That'd be cool. Tracer's girlfriend will die, and over time, she will learn to heal after developing a romance with Widowmaker, who has her own journey as the talent brainwashing wears off. I don't believe this one, guys. 
I think that this is probably the most ridiculous, one of the more ridiculous statements made so far because, okay, maybe Tracer's girlfriend dies. Maybe that would be sad. But um, having a, a homosexual romance front and center of a game would make it pretty hard to sell in China because they're not super into that. Um, it, it makes it pretty hard to, to get approved there. So maybe, maybe they could cut the story. Though. Maybe they could cut the story for China. How would they really make that into um, a, a proper story for a Left 4 Dead style game? I don't know. Cutscenes? Cinematics? That's a lot of cutscenes, a lot of cinematics. And also just the fact that Widowmaker is is straight, like canonically, because she had a husband and stuff. Well, maybe she was actually secretly gay all along. I mean, who knows? This seems like a fanfic. And this one's another fun one, the McCree age plot hole. So in case you don't know, there's a bit of a weird plot hole where McCree is a certain age in the past and he's a certain age now. I don't remember the specifics, but like the ages don't line up apparently. The, like he's too, he's too young now or something. But anyway, the plot hole is being retconned. They could have just ignored it. They could have just been like, sorry, it was just change his age. They could have just done that. But no, they're going to change it into McCree is one of the three clones of Soldier 76. I mean, maybe you could say whatever. That just seems strange. It's possible. A third faction is being added to balance out a lot of the why would these characters work together just because they hate the other guy's stuff. Sure, third faction, that makes sense. Because right now, I do agree that the conflict is, it seems a bit um, manufactured. Now, this uh, this next point is pretty interesting. So the leader of that is a tech, ro tech, uh, tech romancer that brings the dead back to life using nanites, sure. But her ultimate, so I'm going to assume that this is also going to be a new hero in Overwatch. And this is the ultimate they're talking about. Because it doesn't make sense for this to be an ultimate in the scope of the Left 4 Dead style game. So her ult brings back dead players as bots to attack their own team for the remainder of their respawn time, right? So this does not sound like a single player thing. This sounds like it is for the multiplayer Overwatch game. Let's talk about how terrible of an ability this would be. And how I highly doubt this is going to make it into the game. This is probably the first super like ultimate damning evidence that this person is not to be trusted. But... Let's just think about this ultimate. Okay, so you kill, you wipe their team, right? You wipe their team, and then what? You resurrect them all? They only last for the respawn time, so you resurrect them all even though everyone's dead already? That makes no sense. Maybe you kill two people, and then you res two more even though you're up 6v4, like, to win harder? It just seems like a win more ult, and an ultimate that really doesn't have a place many times. I think it sounds cool, right? If you look at this ult, you're like, oh yeah, it sounds pretty cool, but in reality, it just doesn't make any sense. Don't expect a massive engine upgrade as a version for the Switch is in the works. Like, a massive engine upgrade does not happen every two or three years. That's like once every decade or once every seven years or something. So yeah, people wouldn't be expecting this anyway. And that's it for the Overwatch. So that did not sound very trustworthy to me, you guys. Let's go on though to Diablo. The Diablo ones are very interesting. So Diablo 4 went into sudden urgent production with the reaction to Diablo Immortal. So I could see this. I think that Diablo 4 was already in production, obviously. If Blizzard expected Diablo Immortal to be taken pretty well, and it wasn't, then the idea of having the next BlizzCon not have any really super huge Diablo announcement, it's possible that they just uh, were very scared that the brand would decay too hard. It's a first person game made in the Overwatch engine. So this has been a rumor for a while that the new Diablo was gonna be first person. It could be, but I've, it just, I don't know. I don't know, it could be, I'm not gonna say it's not, but it would just be very strange because the people, the type of people who like to play Diablo are not the type of people who like to like, do skillful aiming or whatever in FPS game. It would be such a departure from their normal Diablo fan base. Like the fan base would hate it. They would have to be going for new players if this was their strategy. This is the one that I absolutely don't believe. Like all the stuff above this was like, maybe three classes at launch, three classes at launch, dude. He's, so he says there's three classes at launch and five planned as part of a paid seasonal paid content update. Three classes at launch, I don't care how stupid you think Blizzard is. I don't care how dumb you think the development team is. Like, you could be the most extreme, far extremist person, Blizzard hater. You do not think that they are this out of the loop to think that launching with three classes won't absolutely slaughter them. Like, if they launch a first person Diablo game with three classes at launch and announce five in DLC later, like throughout the next year, 
they will be dead. No, but there is no way. There's no way they do that. They would, uh, no, it's impossible. And the final boss is a holy light infused angel Diablo called Diabel Primus. This is something that people were like, wow, this is ridiculous. I mean, come on guys, they need to find a way for you to kill Diablo again. Like how many different ways can you de kill Diablo? They keep coming up with like crazy new excuses for you to have to kill Diablo. So anything crazy like that, might be the case. And Activision's in the works uh, with a subscription-based game streaming service running on Microsoft's in infrastructure. So um, I could see this, right? I could see Activision having a subscription-based thing because that's the whole, that's the new fad. You have Google Stadia and everyone thinks that streaming games is a really good idea now. So that's possible. And Activision has a big enough of a library for that to be a thing, sure. World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV is no longer allowed to be mentioned in the offices. We don't allow negativity in the dojo. That seems like a really strange thing to say. And Blizzard's take on games tends to be very positive whenever I've spoken to their devs. They're always like, oh yeah, like that game's really cool. We should, we, we could take this from that game. This seems a bit strange. They keep saying it's natural ebb and flow. We can weather the storm. And they're saying that because wow, according to this individual has dipped below 1 million subscribers when their biggest competition just announced that they broke 1 million subscribers at E3. Uh, again, I don't think that this makes a ton of sense because WoW has really been ramping up their patches and their content and they, their new transparency and stuff. So it, it's strange that WoW would put so much effort into and like put so much effort in and also say, oh, it's just natural ebb and flow. Like obviously they have had a reaction or trying to improve. So, um, this is, a, this is a strange thing to say in the face of their actions. There are two tabled competitors for 10. Okay. So here, if you if pay attention to any of the wow stuff, if you haven't been following me, this is the wow thing that I think is again, really damning evidence that this person either doesn't know what they're talking about or is just lying or whatever, because this sounds like the perspective of someone who does not know about game development, uh, who's just trying to guess things, right? <clears throat> so. They're uh, basically saying that the classic team uh, is going, so classic, WoW Classic is gonna dictate who's in charge of the next big World of Warcraft patch. If the money says one team is clearly more profitable than the other, they get the reins. And it's he's talking about how there's a lot of animosity between the WoW team and the classic WoW team because this team is like, oh, are you gonna replace us with these two? This makes no sense, guys. This has no basis in anything that I could ever think would be true because classic WoW, they're just engineers. Like maybe they have, they probably have a couple of technical artists or whatever, but it's mostly just engineers porting over a game. Like there's no designers, there's no story writers. There's no, there's none of that. Like if you compare the, it's, it's a small team. If you compare the classic WoW team to the real WoW team, like there are so many roles in the, in the live WoW team that don't even exist in the classic WoW team, and the size of the teams is on crazy different scopes. So it doesn't make any sense. Like who would be replaced? You would replace the engineers? Like, I don't think that the engineers are gonna be replaced. There's no, like I said, there's no lead designer for a classic WoW because there's nothing to design. So yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. There's nothing to replace. There's no one on the classic WoW team who could replace people on the normal WoW team because those roles literally don't exist on the team. Next, we have a couple points about StarCraft and Hearthstone. So StarCraft, RTS as a genre is considered dead. This is just a general statement that a lot of people believe. Yes, they tried to make an eSport, obviously. Uh, now this is interesting because the StarCraft shooter was at one point quoted as being like Battlefield. And here it's saying that it was intended to out Gears, Gears of War. Gears of War and Battlefield are very, very different games. So I would take the quote from the the Blizzard source as saying it was like Battlefield to be more accurate than this one that is saying it's like Gears. Finally, Hearthstone, the new project lead is not popular with the team, lots of butting heads at the round table meetings. Now remember guys, a lot of times people are promoted into these positions. So it would be strange for someone to not be super popular with the team because this person was probably promoted several times and part of the reason he was promoted is probably because he was popular. So I think that that's pretty unlikely, although every new leadership 
uh, change will generally result in some friction at the start. User drop-off is staggering. No Blizzard game in history has fallen off this far this fast. It is true, like if you look at the, I, I don't know anything about internal statistics, but if, if you look at like the Twitch stats and stuff, the game has been dropping off really hard, particularly with the release of Teamfight Tactics, which hadn't released when this person put this out. But, um, you know, Teamfight Tactics is kind of slaughtering Hearthstone right now. And with MTG Arena, like, Hearthstone went from being a game with no competition at all to being a game with actually quite a lot of competition. So it makes sense that they've been sort of sitting cozy for the past few years and suddenly, boom, like MTG Arena, Auto Chess, Teamfight Tactics. It's really hard. Artifact. Just kidding. And that is everything. So I went through every single point, and uh, while a lot of the points that he made were like, oh, sure, maybe, that sounds maybe plausible, I thought that he made a few really damning sort of like, there's no way this is true, you definitely are lying. Everything this person said was either question, like a little bit questionable or brazenly wrong or public knowledge, which makes me 99.9% .9 certain that these leaks are fake news. It's not, it's a no-go. So uh, still very interesting though. Um, a lot of people were talking about these leaks. Like I said, they, the leaks have been out for about a week or so now. So a lot of people have been talking about it. I just sort of uh, wanted to give my opinion as well. I will be streaming on Twitch TV next time instead of YouTube because I reset up my account with them. And uh, you know, it's just a more proper platform to do streaming on. A lot of people asked me why I wasn't on Twitch last time. That is why. So if you want to keep up to date on when I'm live, I'll have a schedule pretty soon, but for now it's just sort of uh, on demand, like on announcement. Follow me on Discord for that, follow me on Twitter. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube, leave a like, follow me on Yammer, where I'll be cooking, cooking yams. Never forget to stay positive and have a great day. I'll see you next time.